Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another viewer request video. Today where I'm going to be showing you how you can use Apache Flink in PyFlink mode, so using Python to actually write your scripts instead of Java because who wants to write in Java? Um, and we're going to use that to do batched model training for ML models. And not only that, we are going to basically have a batch mode PyFlink script that is going to do production model training where features are picked up from an endpoint and then are used to train multiple different models in parallel on X number of data points. And then including in that, I'm going to do things like, hey, uh, verifying that the results are you know, uh, of a specific R squared score, making sure that we're doing hyperparameter tuning, um, defining you know, the grids for hyperparametering, setting a train test split. So really everything you need to know to use PyFlink to run your ML models in production. Um, it's actually something I didn't really think of using Python to do because, you know, before I just use other services, but it actually makes a lot of sense in batch mode as um, the comments are put out because it gives you some additional functionality that you wouldn't get with using Kafka on its own or Airflow on its own. Um, and so I think it's a really cool use case to explore. So without further ado, let's open a new Python file and get into it. So we'll just call this uh, PyFlink batch model training dot pi and then we can start to build our all of our different uh, libraries and everything we'll need to actually build this uh, Python script so first just import logging so we can get logger information from the logging environment of Apache Flink uh, just you know useful tool obviously to have for interacting with system level messages and also allowing us to track progress and debug issues then we're also going to import a whole slew of different libraries here so we have pandas for manipulating data in kind of in a pandas data frame. We have the sklearn, a few different models from sklearn. So we just use publicly available scikit-learn models. We have linear regression, decision tree regressor, train test split functionality, grid search, CV, so we can do grid searches. Then we also have mean squared error and R2 score, so getting those values from our resulting models. And then we also have a standard scaler for scaling our models, normalizing our data, making sure it's all of a uh, normalized format so we don't have any outliers influencing the results too much. Then for here, PyFlink data stream, so this is just setting up our PyFlink environment. Kafka, so you can produce or consume information from a Kafka topic and use that as the features we're going to use to uh, input into our model. Then we have the map function for mapping and passing data between functions and having a function occur during that transfer process. Table environment data types for creating tables and using different data types within PyFlink. And then schema, CSV, and file system for uh, creating data schemas, CSVs, interacting with our local file system. And then also job lib for bringing in some of the build packages for actually building and running uh, the PyFlink environment. So once we're done with that, then we're going to define some parameters. So we've got all our packages, all our libraries. Uh, here, we're going to want to put a path to our input data. So the input data that we're going to want to input and path to. Then we also have our output path. So where we're going to store the results uh, of our model training. So this is the raw data. This is the model results. This is saving the actual model themselves, so path to save that wherever you're running Flink. And then we also have our Kafka server where we're going to be consuming from and the Kafka topic you want to be consuming from that's running on that server. So just some general formatting because we're going to be using these variables all throughout the script, so better to define them at the top and then be able to just reference them as needed. So if we ever need to change the input or output results, we can do that easily in a single location. So now we've got our variables all written down. Let's also initiate and just set up our PyFlink environment. So here, this is just going to be setting up our PyFlink execution uh, task environments. So stream execution environment is the entry point for actually executing programs within Flink. And then the table environment is what we're going to use for actually handling table operations. So when we need to work with data in that table format, we'll need two different environments for that. So both the stream execution and a table environment. Then what we'll do is define our schema and register our input data. So here, this is where you're going to want to define the schema of the different features you want to monitor for, you want to uh, use for training your models. Um, so here, change the data type you know, to whatever you need, data type flow if you're just a label here as well. So you have you know, maybe a label for the features. And then here, you're also going to register that input data just as an empty table. So within the CSV format, using the column delimiter, using the schema that we just defined, just creating a temporary input table for storing that raw data that we're gonna take in from our Kafka environment, or from our local file system. Then what we'll do 
is read that input data into a table. So here, basically from that path, the input table path here, um, we're going to read in our data and then convert it to a pandas data frame. So here, input table, and then split our data into features and labels. So features are what we want to use as our measurable inputs to try and predict this Y label value. Um, so once we're done setting that up, segmenting our data into the predicted values and the value we actually want to predict, um, then what we'll do is set some feature scaling using that standard scalar we imported. So here, creating a standard scalar instance, and then we're going to use that standard scalar environment to standardize your features by removing your mean and scaling to unit variance. So any outliers are conformed to a normalized scale. Um, so while you know they still will appear as being close to their value, if it's a really extreme outlying, that distance from you know its closest value is is condensed is kind of a good way of thinking about it. Then the next thing we're going to need to do is actually splitting the data into trusting and testing and training data sets. So here, x train, x test, y train, y test. Here, uh, test size 20%, random state 42. So it doesn't just going to split like hey first 20% and then 80%. This will randomly pick 80% and 20%. So if you do this multiple times with different random states, you can have different training and testing data sets, which can be useful for uh, kind of dialing in how you're training your model and, and what's being used for it. Then we will define our models in hyperparameter grids. So here we're going to register a linear regression model and a decision tree model just in this model's array. And then we're also going to define our hyperparameter grids for tuning. And in machine learning, a hyperparameter grid is a predetermined grid that's going to define potential values for each hyperparameter. And a hyperparameter itself is an external configuration variable that you can manually set to manage kind of how it learns. So here, this is where you, know, you can say, hey, I want to use linear regression decision tree with these max depth values of 3, 5, 7, 10. So you can kind of tweak how that model is actually going to function. Um, and so here you have your hyperparameter grid of five, se three, five, seven, and ten. Next, what we'll do is actually train our models and perform some hyperparameter tool tuning. So we're going to create an empty uh, array just for storing our training the models and parallel and tune hyperparameters. Then for every model name and model in those items, so just these two, uh, we have training model name using that grid search CV function to train the model. Um, so here, just feeding in all of our different uh, parameters, so our model, our parameter grids. Um, so you know, this uh, parameter grid is saying, hey, we've tested these different hyperparameter depths, find the best scoring one, and then use grid search to fit that model. And say, hey, best model is the one that has the best score for these uh, different hyperparameters. Then once we've found the best model, save that train model using the job lib dump and then make predictions using that model. So here are Y predictive values going off of that testing data set, not the training data set. Um, we're going to try and predict some Y values. And then once we predicted them, we're going to cal calculate our validation metrics, make sure that this model is performing within our defined parameters. So calculates mean squared error. It's R2, R squared score using that Y test and Y predicted. So comparing against the actual values. And then we're also going to append all these results to our results array. So this will iterate through however many different models you want to use. If you want to add additional models, add them to this list, and it will go through for each model, find the best uh, fit for that model, and then and give you that uh, tailored version uh, as the output for every model within that list. Then, once we're done with that, so we'll save the results to a CSV. Um, so have the MSC and R squared, you know, again, as uh, defining characteristics, whether or not it's a good value. Um, and then just save the model name and evaluation metrics, so that entire results data frame, um, and then storing that as a CSV file in that output path we defined earlier. Then we'll define a Kafka output function to actually output the results of this. So this allows you to monitor it, you know, have Kafka as kind of the end translation layer. And so here we have class output function, literally just returning uh, the values that were inputted into it. And then here, we're writing the results to a Kafka topic using that Flint, Flint Kafka producer, producing to that Kafka topic that we would actually monitoring and say, hey, here are the resulting models that were trained and here are their results. Um, and you can go back and see what that model was, what they said it was trained on, all of that. Um, and just tell it to use, again, that Kafka bootstrap server that we defined earlier. Then all we're doing here is just defining, so setting that output stream from that collection. So essentially calling these functions we just used um, and saving that as records uh, within that Kafka topic and then adding the produce sync of being this Kafka producer. 
Then finally, just have one more line to actually execute the flink job. So and execute, and this will execute this entire script and produce a list of different models and their relative scores and how accurate they were um, to your Kafka topic. So really simple, maintainable way, but with production grade um, you know, inputs in here to make sure, hey, you're running a simple way, but you're running in a really repeatable and scalable way, leveraging Flink to do all that model training. Uh, maybe not in parallel, or you could do it in parallel because Flink is really good at distributed computing. Um, so I hope you have found this video helpful, especially the one that requested it. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.